Well, hi, I want to welcome everybody to the channel. I uh, do the yellow post. I'm all over Facebook. I thought I'd load some beautiful information about how we know it was the apostles that in fact did write the Gospels. I uh, just love the uh, apostolic fathers. I'm a Baptist preacher, and I just despise the word apostolic fathers. They're never called apostolic fathers. They're referred to as elders. The word there for elder could be a pastor or a bishop, uh, as long as it's an elder's position. That's the point and the purpose to the citations. They're never referred to as uh, apostolic fathers. I uh, just wanted to demonstrate the importance of seeing the Apostle John here, and we have literally two men here that know the Apostle John, Papias and Polycarp. And you might want to remember the scripture in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, where God says he gave to the church pastors and teachers so that the church could be built up. And you can be sure that the apostles are not going to leave the church in the hands of wolves. They're going to leave the church in the hands of very faithful men. It's actually the convert of Polycarp. His name is Irenaeus, who tells us that uh, it is in fact Polycarp's position that John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote the Gospels. I mean, we have a consecutive, consistent witness. We know John knew Jesus. Now we have two men that literally know the Apostle John. And we have Irenaeus, who knows Polycarp personally. And he says so. And I'm not talking about just him, but there's various sources that prove for us that Irenaeus was, in fact, a disciple of uh, Polycarp. What's interesting to notice here that's very, very, very important is that we have two men that write about the life of Christ, John and Matthew. We have two men that write about the apostles witnessing the life of Christ, which is Matthew, uh, which is Mark and Luke. So we have two men that know Jesus. We have two men that talk about Paul and Peter that know Jesus. We also have now two men in history that know the Apostle John. And we have two historians, Irenaeus in the second century. And like I've always said, we have Eusebius in the fourth century. We clearly have all their writings. Everything we need to know is right there. And what one man says is simply corroborated by another man. For example, Papias says that Mark was the interpreter of Peter because Mark traveled with Peter. Irenaeus says the very same thing and phrases it the very same way. Irenaeus also my friend knows Polycarp. And what's interesting about Irenaeus is that Irenaeus says that Polycarp was the, the pastor who was appointed the church of Smyrna by the Apostle John, that John actually ordained him there in that church. The writer also, Irenaeus, would have first-hand knowledge about John because he says in a letter to Florinius that he had seen, when he was very young, the, the uh, disciple Polycarp. And uh, he was listening to him and teaching him that uh, him and John were having lots of conversations about the Lord. It's Papias that I want to focus on today a little bit. Papias uh, was an apostolic pastor, an apostolic bishop, an apostolic elder. He's referred to as an elder, the Bishop of Hierapolis, which is in uh, the northern parts of Turkey. And he authored a book, five, a five-volume set. And uh, he lived in the first century, and he died around 130 AD, martyred for his faith. It was Papias who wrote the expositions or the sayings of the Lord because he had a heart for the Lord. You'll see it in a minute. In a minute. He wanted to hear the voice. He makes that very clear in the expositions of the Lord that uh, he wanted to hear the voice of the men that knew the apostles. And then he makes a beautiful statement about John the apostle and hearing his voice. He wrote a five volume set, but unfortunately, like a lot of history, we're left with little bits and pieces and chunks that have been collected by men like Irenaeus and men like uh, Eusebius in the fourth century. What's interesting uh, to note is that Irenaeus says that John pastored a church at Ephesus. And these are the churches that the apostle Paul started 
started. The beautiful thing about John being in Ephesus is after John died, there were men that took over that church. And we have around 180 AD a pastor there at Ephesus, and he calls Papias a man of ancient times, referring to Papias being close to the Apostle John in ancient early Christian history. His name is Polycrates, Polycrates. Now, I've spent uh, several years now debating atheists, and they always tell you, we don't know who wrote the Gospels. It's a common popular position by scholars today, but I can assure you there's lots of scholars that believe what is called the traditional view, and the traditional view based on eyewitness accounts states that the apostles had handed down those churches to men they knew. Those men had written records. They confirmed the fact that they knew the Apostle John personally and so on. Great men. D.A. Carson, I think of F.F. F. Bruce, is also a traditional view supporter. He supports what is called the traditional view. In one of my yellow posts, I have a long list of men that support the traditional position. So he writes a five-volume set. The writings are preserved by Irenaeus and also by Eusebius in the 4th century. In the Expositions and the Oracles of the Lord, he was an elder of the Church of Hierapolis. He was martyred around 160 AD. What can we learn from those 10 chapters and the fragments? I've actually deciphered them, written them all out for what we can learn. And what we can learn right away in chapter 1 is what he says. What does Papias say about the Apostle John personally and an inquiry about who he wanted to use as evidence for the life of Christ. He says, I made inquiries about the words of the elders. The word elder is the pastor. He's referring to the men that pastored churches. He wanted to hear from the men. And you'll notice it's in the past tense for that very reason. He says, I made inquiry about the words of the elders, what Andrew and Peter had said. Past tense. Philip, Thomas, James, John, the apostle. Matthew. It's all in the past tense as he's hearing the voice of these men that knew the apostles personally or of any other of the Lord's disciples, he says, and whatever. And here it is now in the present tense. And this is important because an atheist wants to tell you that uh, this is not the same John. It's a different John. Watch. And whatever Aristian and John the disciple says, John the Elder, John the Elder, in the present tense. He wanted to hear what? The voice of the elders that knew the apostles, had a connection to the apostle in the past tense, and now he wants to hear the voice of John the Elder. So, did you know that in 2 John, John the Apostle is actually called an elder? It's in the present tense. And he says the Lord's follower, the Lord's disciples, and what they were saying. Because he says, I didn't want the information to come from books. I wanted the information to come from a what? A surviving voice, a living voice. That's important because remember... In 2 Thessalonians, Paul warns people about letters coming uh, signed by the apostles, but they're teaching false doctrine. The point is, Papias, who makes it very clear, was a convert of John, makes it very clear in his writings that uh, John, uh, he heard the voice of John. John is called an elder in uh, the smaller epistles of John. That's the elder, John the Apostle, that Papias knew. So what can we learn from just such a small statement like that? We can easily demonstrate that Papias knows the Apostle John because he heard the voice of John the Apostle. Lots of scholars believe what I just told you, and it's confirmed again by Eusebius in the 4th century. Papias affirms that he received the sayings of the apostles from those that accompanied them. There you go. How would Eusebius know that 400 years later? Well, go to Irenaeus, much closer. Irenaeus knows Polycarp. Papias is a companion of John the Apostle, and Polycarp and Papias are companions. Irenaeus says so. He said, these things are borne witness to in writing, in writing, by Papias, the hearer of John and the companion of Polycarp. I think it just makes such a beautiful presentation that what we have is we have a promise from Jesus that says, 
in Ephesians 4, 11, he would give pastors to the church. Now we have two men that are going to give testimony about Jesus, which is John and Matthew. We have Mark and Luke who give eyewitness account to Paul and Peter. We have Papias and Polycarp, two men that are going to give account to the fact that they knew John. And we have two Roman, we have two Christian historians giving us everything we need to know to tie it all in together to support Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Once the apostles had all been martyred except for John who died of old age, pay very close attention. We've had pastors ever since. Hey, let's do it again. Play around with the yellow post, and I hope you just simply enjoy it. Remember everything I told you, because an atheist has an excuse for everything.